So the idea is that you can start to see only what you prefer to see. And the power in this is twofold. One is that your subjective experience of life changes immediately, which means that you're no longer taking any cues from your circumstances. You're no longer elaborating upon how it is you should feel, what it is you should decide upon, how it is you should live your life based upon the circumstances. Instead, what you feel is what you choose to see. What you see is what you choose to feel. So in other words, be your preference, see only your preference. And your preference can be anything, but it is always a frequency of consciousness. It is a state of being. So first of all, you need to know what you wish to experience. What do you wish to get out of life? What do you wish to paste onto it? How do you wish to color this picture? How do you wish to imagineer your creation? So you simply ask yourself the question, you take a moment, take two to five seconds to relax your mind, take a deep breath, give away all your ideas, your everyday ideas, your everyday thoughts, just give them back to life, just relax. And ask yourself, ask your heart, why it is you are here. If you could only experience one state of being for the rest of your life, if you could only experience one type of existence, one mode of being, only one, what would that be? If you had to give up everything else that you think you need or desire, if there would be only one state of being that you could be in all the time, what would it be? In other words, what's the highest for you? What's the most important? What's the most life-giving? What connects you the most to who you really are? What vibration, so to speak? In comparison to this, everything else should pale should be almost rendered irrelevant. And it's okay if you have not given this any thought before, but do it now. If everything was about to be taken away from you, it's not, but don't worry. But if it was, and you could hold on to only one thing, one idea, one concept, one reality, one existence, one mode of being, one way of being yourself, only one thing, what would that be? What would be the most important to you? And you, when you find one such quality, one such frequency, one such state of being, you simply choose to experience that. You simply choose to feel that. So first you see it, first you picture it, and then you start feeling it. The longer you start seeing something, the longer you imagine something, the more you start feeling it. And the more you feel it, the more you become it. The more you start to exude it, the more you start to become that in your behavior, in your actions, in your state of being, in your speech, in your thought, in your beliefs. All these things, all these aspects of your personality, they start to reflect this chosen state of being. Whatever you choose to emit, and by emit, emitting I simply mean being, whatever you choose to be in this moment, whatever you choose to see, to feel, and to be, everything else will start to warp itself around that. Literally, you are at the center of a vortex in a sense the center of a, you could picture it as a cyclone or a tornado, and everything else just revolves around your center, your center of gravity, your center of being. So whatever you place within that center, whatever you choose upon within that center, is inevitably going to dictate the flow of that cyclone, of that vortex, of that energy attraction point. Inevitably, this cannot be undone. In other words, if you are seeing, feeling, and being a certain frequency, everything else in your life starts to reflect this. It cannot not do this. That means that your mind starts to change. Even your body starts to change. Your physique starts to change. Your cells start to change. Your environment starts to change. Your circumstances start to change. The people you hang out with start to, start to change. The career choices or jobs or no jobs that you choose start to change. Now here's the important part. If you wish to truly bring this out into your reality, and again, I shared this mostly last week, but I'll share it again. You have to, as you look around yourself, as you look around in your life, as you see the things that you see, as you see the people that you see, you have to be willing to paste that onto everything you see. You have to be willing to just 
not see what's actually there, which is just a thought, what we have suggested is actually there. We don't really know what's actually there, so it doesn't really matter. So instead of seeing what we think is actually there, which is just another type of thought, it's another type of pasting a certain state of being onto what is essentially neutral and empty, which is environment. When you paste your new frequency onto that, meaning you completely disregard what's going on, doesn't mean you come, become completely stupid. Of course, there's common sense. However, you're not taking your cue from what's occurring. You're not basing anything off of what other people would suggest is happening right now. You become fearless in a way. You become courageous. You become determined. You become bold. You become free. You anchor yourself first and foremost in the frequency of your choice. Tune into that. See it until you start feeling it. And when you feel it, you start to be it. You start to become it. You start to exude it. And then you bring that with you into everyday life. You only see your preference. Your preferred state of being is all you see. So whether someone calls you an asshole or a pretty lady, you don't care. It doesn't matter either way. It's empty and neutral and meaningless. You simply keep seeing what you wish to see. You keep feeling what you wish to feel. You keep being and acting as you wish to be and act. And when your actions and your behavior, which is synonymous with being, when your behavior becomes so attuned to your chosen frequency of being, then your circumstances will again have to reflect that. If you respond, if you see, if you be, if you respond from your chosen frequency only regardless of what happens outside of you, regardless of how other people would define that moment and say you should be acting accordingly, <laughs> regardless of all that, if you keep responding to that moment how you would in your ideal chosen state of being, then that state of being will start to spill out into your environment and it will start to rearrange, literally rearrange the space-time structure of your existence. This is how energy operates. It responds to you because energy, which is everything, does not have a will. It does not have a consciousness of its own. It has a consciousness in a sense, but it does not have a will of its own, meaning that circumstances cannot actually impose upon you anything. They never have. Circumstances have never imposed upon you a single thing. Every single choice you made was made based on your own beliefs, based on your own perceptions, based on your own choices. It may have seemed like it was somehow indicated by circumstances, but this has never actually been the case. You have simply chosen, you've simply given your permission to make decisions based on how things looked in your life. But that was still out of your decision. That was still out of your self-permission. It actually was not indicated physically by your circumstances. And so since energy does not have a will of its own, it does not have an intention for your life, it does not have an inherent set of meanings and values, it literally is up to you, consciousness. You as consciousness. You as consciousness. It is up to you as consciousness to determine what life is like. And so in every moment, it takes its cue from you. Every moment, what we call energy, what we call this projection of consciousness, what we call this dream existence, is literally taking its cue from your state of being, from your choices, from your behavior, from your beingness. 